What are the advantages and disadvantages of negative feedback? And our question today comes from Bill in Leroy. Hey, Leroy! New York. <laughs> Sorry for the residents of Leroy, New York. I've never even heard of it. So, all right, let's, let's, <clears throat> let's start with negative feedback. And I, I got a trusted drawing board here. And thank you for all the feedback that people have come and said, you need to use a, a marker pen and something where we can actually see it better. Hopefully this works. This is kind of our conference room in here. Okay, so negative feedback. First off, let's start with how we draw an amplifier. It's on a schematic, a very simple block that is basically a triangle on its side, right? And in this particular amplifier, we'll use an op amp as an example, we'll have output, uh, and then we're going to have two inputs, a minus input and a plus input. This is outside of the scope of our discussion to discuss what these are because this is what's known as a differential input. And if any of you want to know, I'd be happy to discuss how an op amp works. It's one of the things that is near and dear to my heart, op amps. I can uh, show you diff pairs and how it all works. Might be an interesting subject. Yeah, maybe, yeah, all right. Maybe even if you don't ask, I'll do one. Just because you ought to know, right? <laughs> all right. So <clears throat> in this instance, we're going to use this plus input, which we would refer to as the non-inverting input. Means it, it, whatever you put in, you get out, right? So you got that? That's our output. So when we put a sine wave into here, then we get the exact same thing out here at the output. This goes in, this goes out. <clears throat> but because this is an amplifier, we are actually going to get something big out, right? Small in, big out. That's the way that works. Now, in this drawing, there is no negative feedback, okay? So negative feedback is when we take the output and we put it back to the input and compare the two, all right? We use a difference amplifier to do that. Why would we do that? Well, if you think about it, in any system, whether it's a woofer or an amplifier, all the workings in here are doing things that there's no feedback to tell how well they're doing it. So when something goes in here, we've got all these little transistors and resistors and capacitors in here. Whatever they're doing, how well do they do it at the output? How close is this out to this in? Well, we don't know. There's no way to tell, right? I mean, I can tell when I look on a scope, but you, you don't want to import me into your stereo system, sit there and look at a scope and go, yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, we're not doing that. So what do we do? Well, we take the output, we put it through a resistor, because we don't want to short it out. Well, anyway, we're not going to get into that. Uh, and we're going to feed it back into this input here. This is the inverting input, and it's where we're going to measure the differences between this and this. Okay? Now, when we do that, something's going to happen. Depending, we have another resistor out here, and that goes to ground. Okay, so between these two resistors, we're setting up our ratio, our feedback ratio. So let's say that this, uh, don't get all jiggy on me, but let's just say that this resistor is 10 and this resistor is 1 as opposed to 20 or 1. Now, really, that'd be 10K or this would be 1K. We're not going to use 1 ohm, but again, purposes of explanation, so you get it, right? So there's a 10 to 1 ratio here, which means that whatever goes in here will be 10 times higher here. If I were to change this resistor to 20, then this would be 20 times bigger than this, or 30, or 40, or whatever I want. I can set the gain of that, and, and why is that? Okay, I'm going to try and do this quick so we don't get too mired into all this stuff. The truth is, on most amplifiers, this output without 
that feedback is like stupid high. It's like off the frickin' charts high. Got it? I mean, so high that in many cases, it just goes up to the top and just shit, it just clips. Done! Ah! It, you know, here, here's our power supply rail. You know, here, here is, you know, here's our plus input on, on power. So you got, you know, 20 volts up here and you got minus 20 volts down here. Well, when you don't have any feedback, this sucker is going to go all the way up to the 20 volt rail or the 15 volt, whatever it is, and bang up against there. Yo! And then bang up against there. And it's going to look like hell, right? So it's got way too much gain. This is called open loop gain. So when the open loop is uncontrolled, it's out of control, right? Okay, we're getting there. Now, we don't want out of control, right? What we want, nice in control. So we're going to add some negative feedback like we did over here. There's your thing, blah, 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 bing, bing, bing. Okay, so now we got a 10 to one. Now, this is all very nice. So one of the questions, so that's an advantage of negative feedback. Two things have happened. One, we've controlled the gain. Two, because this is now very clean compared to this because we're, we're using that, all that gain of the amplifier to get it right, to, to do whatever it needs to do in the amplifier to get this closer to this. And that's called lowering the distortion. So now we have low distortion. We have controlled gain and it's not out of control. All right, last thing. Why is negative feedback in high-end audio generally considered to be something we want to be careful of and control? Okay, well, remember when I drew the crazy out of control thing? Well, consider this. Feedback. And I don't care if the feedback is your car's cruise control, which is a feedback mechanism, right? Car goes too fast, it says, whoa, 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 and pulls the accelerator back, right? There's a hysteresis, there's a lag between the time that something happens and something is corrected because this is not instant. I know electricity travels fast, but it's not instant, okay? So, if the open loop gain is such that it's out of control, then for a brief moment, when there is no feedback, because this has not had time to get back to here, the amplifier is essentially out of control. And that can cause oh, uh, square waves to have these big ringing things on them, like this. I'm exaggerating here. Uh, because there's too much feedback. And we can calm that down by controlling the amount of open loop gain inside of our amplifier, which is a whole nother subject, and we'll get to that later. But hope that helps. That, that, that's a little brief tutorial on negative feedback. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.